A local lemonade stand is back in central New York for its sixth year and helping raise money for a good cause. I was there earlier today to taste some of that sweet lemonade. Ava Musi is not your average 13 year old. While her peers are out relaxing over the weekend, she's put together a lemonade stand to help raise money for a special cause. We're out here with my friends and family and we are out here raising money for childhood cancer. This is Musi's sixth year putting this lemonade stand together. The proceeds go to Alex's Lemonade Stand Foundation, a charity to research childhood cancer. Collectively, in the six years, she's raised more than $13,000, something her parents are extremely proud of. We've had um, people in our family, both our families that have had um, uh, cancer, and, and to see it happen with children, it just it takes you, it pulls at your heartstrings even more so. And they were there to support her all the way. Whatever she needed, we were right there because we think it's that important. She's um, a young person who could be doing almost anything with her time, and she chooses to be kind and give back to other people, and we're super proud of her for that. By raising this money, Ava knows this is going to people who need it, and she was happy to be part of that journey. It helps. It really, just doing stuff, you'll definitely feel better after it's done, and you'll definitely feel the, the, the good that happens while you're doing it. It's really helpful. The lemonade stand ended late this afternoon, but if you weren't able to attend, you can still donate, and that link will be on our website at cnycentral.com. Good morning. We're joined today by Lieutenant Malinowski with the Syracuse Police Department. Lieutenant Malinowski, thanks for joining me. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So we've done a lot of talking about downtown safety, whether it be the different open spaces there or crime in the area. Would you tell me a little bit about how you guys plan to ask outside agencies for some help? Oh yeah, so this just really goes to uh, show how this community comes together, especially all of our partnering agencies. So we've clearly had our challenges uh, downtown. Um, there's been kind of this lawlessness that's been taking place. So we did call our partners in uh, we did ask uh, for help, and we've really thrown everything that we can at the Armory Square. Um, that comes in help from our, our state agencies, uh, parole, probation, all teaming up to really come down there and a lot of proactive policing, which, again, people always question, does proactive policing work? Um, it's a prime example. We've been out there. We've been enforcing even parking tickets, uh, th th those low-level um, offenses that prevent the big offenses and got some handguns. So, again, we've seen some success. We want people to come down there and enjoy it. And, again, we just want people to recognize those efforts. So if you do come downtown, you know what's taking place. So the fair is just a couple weeks away. And originally we heard that the fair wasn't going to allow off-duty officers to carry guns. But that has since changed. Would you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so... I guess for the policy on carrying guns overall, I, I would leave that up to the fair, to, to their exact regulations. There was something to the effect that only um, active on-duty officers were going to be able to carry. Uh, I think we made a little bit of noise, and we're uh, just saying that off-duty officers should have that same um, right to be able to carry into the fair, and they have since clarified that. Um, and it's important because whether you're Syracuse police, uh, county, or, or state police, uh, you have the authority to make any felony arrest anywhere in New York State as a police officer. So if we're going to have that obligation and that duty to have to perform when we're working or not, uh, we really need to make sure that we have all those tools uh, to be able to perform our job. So I, I think it was a very smart decision to at least allow law enforcement to carry. And again, because if something happens, uh, we definitely want, you know, on duty or off duty to act and, and keep us all safe. So we are glad to see that the, uh, the fair made that accommodation. So you think kind of having more people there who, you know, have that extra layer of protection will help keep everyone safe during the fair? Of course. And that, that's going to um, uh, be, be the ultimate goal. And we're excited for the fair as always. So um, hopefully we have a good time um, and everyone's safe. Well, Lieutenant Malinowski, thank you so much for joining me here this morning. People in Oswego County are asking for the Department of Social Services to be held accountable for a number of child abuse cases that have not properly been investigated. Good evening, everyone. I'm Alora Lagarde. Thank you for being with us tonight. Cases such as Galaxy Cruise, Jordan Brooks, and possibly the death of a 13-year-old who died in a fire in Granby, which turned out that the family was involved in a CPS investigation in the Oswego County. Some of these cases have been delayed for over a year. Months later, the people are still looking to hear from DSS Commissioner Stacey Alvord. 
Months ago, our CNY Central News team demanded answers from her, but we never got one. And months later, the push for answers has not gone away. Tonight, we have continuing coverage on the ongoing investigation. There are growing demands for some that DSS be held accountable for a number of alleged child abuse cases that the county has seen over a number of years, including the deaths of 15-month-old Galaxy Ellis Cruz and 17-year-old Jordan Brooks. Do you think the public will just forget? If it was a baby in one of the legislature's family or friends, would you still let it be ignored? At the Oswego County Legislator meeting held on Thursday, Colleen Scott spoke out about holding DSS Commissioner Stacey Alvord accountable for the deaths of these children. And she wasn't alone. I know many of us cannot count on CPS to take any responsibility and accountability for their flawed actions. We have yet to see this. I have expressed my concerns, which I feel have fallen on deaf ears. Jordan Brooks lived with cerebral palsy. He was in the care of his mother, Lisa Waldron, and stepfather, Anthony Waldron. Before he died, there were multiple calls to CPS from his teachers and aides, but those calls of worry were dismissed by CPS. The day Jordan died, he weighed only 55 pounds, and his cause of death was malnourishment and sepsis, with sores covering his body. The Waldrons now face criminal charges for Jordan Brooks' death. Stacy Alford continues to refuse to regarding the matter. There's no excuse for the mishandling of the child's death. There was also the case of Aaron Maxwell in 2008, an 11-year-old who died from child abuse, and now a new case involving a 13-year-old who died in a fire in Granby in December. It was discovered her family was an active CPS case in the county. Oswego County Legislator Frank Casilia says Commissioner Alvord should be held accountable. Commissioner Alvord should be stepping down as commissioner of DSS.